Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about the urinary system. The urinary system is a super important organ system that has a lot of different jobs that you might not have been familiar with. Um, a lot of people think that it's all about the excretion of liquid waste, and that's just one of the many jobs that it does. It actually does a whole bunch of other things. It controls how much fluid is in our body. That's a big deal because how much fluid is in our body, that controls blood volume, and that has a direct impact on blood pressure. So the kidneys are centrally um, important, or they're very important for controlling blood pressure. They have um, a very um, strong endocrine function. Um, they release hormones like erythropoietin, which controls the rate at which um, white blood cells and red blood cells, or no, red blood cells are made. It also controls kind of uh, the uh, blood pressure indirectly by releasing renin, right? So it releases some important hormones like erythropoietin, which uh, controls how many uh, red blood cells are made, renin, which controls um, blood pressure. Um, in addition, the kidneys are gonna control the pH of the blood. So they're, they're gonna control how many hydrogen ions are in the blood. That's really important because we've learned that if blood pH gets out of whack, then that causes some major problems um, for the body, okay? And finally, it does control um, uh, kind of the excretion of dissolved wastes like um, like like nitrogenous wastes which have resulted from the metabolism of, um, of proteins so one thing it gets rid of and it's um, probably the it is the most common dissolved uh, substance in urine is called urea urea is actually not even made by the kidneys urea is made by the um, by the liver when we use proteins for metabolism so when we break down the proteins for fuel um, it produces nitrogen nitrogenous waste in the form of ammonia and um, ammonia is really nasty stuff like you use ammonia to clean your kitchen counters with or you clean your bathrooms we don't want that circulating around in our blood so luckily the liver will convert that ammonia into a less toxic uh, substance called urea that floats around our um, our uh, cardiovascular system until the kidneys filter it out and release it into the urine, which we don't where we don't need it anymore. Okay, so kidneys are crucially important. Um, this is kind of a little drawing of where the kidneys are. We'll kind of start over here. I've just done, drawn like a really quick little sketch of um, a torso. Okay, so you have kind of a torso over here, right? Kind of finish out this sketch. All right, and then there is kind of just the basic parts of the torso, kind of like this. Well, what you'll find is that the kidneys are gonna be located on the posterior wall of the abdominal cavity beneath the 11th and 12th floating ribs. So those last two ribs that exist um, down on the back side of the, um, those ribs are gonna be like right there and right here. That's where the kidneys are, okay? The kidneys have a very distinct shape. They are gonna have a shape that looks like this, right? Looks like a kidney bean. That's really how that bean got its name. The right kidney on this side is gonna be a little bit lower or a little bit more inferior than the left kidney, and that's because the large liver is kind of occupying this space and taking up a lot of room. Okay, so the kidneys kind of have that um, shape. You're going to have a very large um, renal artery which delivers blood into the kidneys. So the renal artery is going to be situated um, right here and it's going to kind of come out right there. The renal artery is an extension off of that abdominal aorta which is extending downwards like that. So you have the abdominal aorta which is kind of sending blood downwards. The renal artery is an extension off of that. Okay. You're also going to have a renal vein which is draining nice, clean, and adjusted blood out of the kidney. So you almost want to think of it like this. These, this red renal artery right here is delivering this, not like dirty blood, but it's blood that needs to be adjusted. It might not have the right amount of, of salts or hydrogen ions. It might not have, it might have waste in it. The kidneys are going to work their magic, take out everything that shouldn't be there, and then everything that's left is gonna be clean blood and that's gonna be dumped back into this renal vein. The renal veins come out here and they drain into the inferior vena cava, which is gonna send that blood right back up to the heart, okay? So blood kinda of comes out like this, goes in like that. Now everything that was taken out of the 
blood, all this extra water, extra salts, all that stuff is gonna be collected in a series of tubes that drains down into the pelvic cavity. These guys are called ureters. Let me kind of label some of this stuff. So obviously this right here is a kidney, right? You have the renal artery sending blood in, the renal vein um, sending blood out. This little tube right there, that is called the ureter, okay? The ureter is then going to dump its contents into this muscular sac, which sits right down there at the base of the pelvic uh, cavity. That muscular sac is called our uh, bladder. So I'll kind of color that in, okay? All right, so our bladder is gonna be located right there. All right. Then the bladder holds urine, and then when we need to release that urine, we're gonna um, send that urine out of another tube that connects the bladder to the outside world, and that is called the urethra, okay? Obviously, the urethra is gonna be longer in males than it is in females, which has a really important significance when it comes to um, infections of the urinary tract. So you ever heard that myth that urine's sterile? Well, it's definitely not sterile because urine has to go through the urethra and the urethra connects to a pretty dirty place in the human body. And um, so there's gonna be gram positive and gram negative bacteria that are hanging out in the urethra and in the bladder. Well, if these nasty bacteria get too numerous, right? They kind of um, are, there's more of them than there should be. They can cause irritation to both the urethra or the bladder. That's a urinary tract infection. Infection. The urethra in males is much longer than the urethra in females, and that's why um, urinary tract infections or UTIs are much more common in females because the bacteria have a much shorter kind of you know, way to go before they can infect the, the bladder, okay? So that's kind of what's going on there in a nutshell. <laughs> before let's, we talk more about urine, I think it's important to discuss um, the bladder in a little bit more detail. So if you think about it, it's really convenient that we have a, a bladder, right? So a bladder allows us to kind of store urine until it's convenient for us to let go of it, right? For us to urinate. And um, if you think about it, if we didn't have a bladder, we would have urine that's constantly like leaking out of our bodies, which would be much not convenient at all, okay? So if we were to zoom in on kind of what's going on in this uh, bladder, so let's say we're gonna redraw the bladder right here. This is kind of what the bladder looks like, okay? So the bladder is a muscular sac, all right? It's this kind of circular muscular sac. It has a bunch of smooth muscle in the walls of the bladder, and that's what these kind of red hash marks represent, or all that smooth muscle. The name of all of these kind of overlapping um, sheets of muscle is called the detrusor. So D-E-T-R-U-S-O-R. All right, so that's the detrusor, D-E-T-R-U-S-O-U-R. I didn't write that, that well. Um, and on the inside of the uh, the bladder, it's gonna be lined with transitional epithelium. If you remember from AMP1, that stuff is really good at stretching, okay? So <clears throat> that's kind of what happens. Uh, that's kind of the overall shape of the bladder. Now the bladder is going to be connected to the outside world through the urethra. We're gonna use the female urethra as an example here, which is comparatively much shorter than the male urethra. Okay, so here is the urethra. And the two um, ureters, I'll kind of keep with the same color scheme, are gonna come down here, they're gonna go behind the bladder and they're gonna dump their contents into the bladder through these little openings right about there. So that's a ureter and we got another ureter there and they're gonna dump their contents into the bladder. Now, the bladder, as it fills up with urine, the smooth muscle of the detrusor is just gonna relax. It's a process called accommodation. It's just gonna keep relaxing and relaxing and relaxing, and that's gonna cause the bladder to get larger and larger and larger. Um, the, the bladder typically holds, by the time it holds about uh, 500 milliliters of urine, that's the size of literally a, um, a water bottle. Once it holds that much urine, it's pretty full, and you're gonna feel the need to um, urinate. 
When it gets that full, you're gonna have uh, stretch receptors in the wall of the bladder that's gonna send a signal to your spinal cord, which is then going to send a signal back to the bladder, which causes the detrusor to contract and squeeze that urine. At the same time, you're gonna have a special little sphincter, which is located right here. And this sphincter wraps around the urethral like that. That is called the internal urethral sphincter. So, internal urethral sphincter. And he's located right here. This guy is made up of smooth muscle and he's gonna relax, which is gonna let the urine pass through. Luckily, there's another sphincter, which is located closer to the outside, outer surface of the body. That one is gonna be located right here. He's also gonna be composed of muscle that wraps around the urethra like this. But this is the external urethral sphincter and he is made up of skeletal muscle and we can control that. So we're gonna um, keep this contracted until it's a time that we're ready for that urine to come out then we relax it. If we want to hold it, we're going to keep this contracted. That's going to send signals back to the detrusor and the internal urethral sphincter, which tells them, hey, it's not a good time. These guys are going to, um, the internal urethral sphincter is going to contract. The detrusor is going to relax. The bladder is going to keep filling up with urine. When it gets a little bit more full, the whole process starts again. Signals go to the spinal cord, causes this guy to contract, squeezing the urine out. The internal urethral sphincter relaxes. If we find that it's a convenient time to go to the bathroom, this external urethral sphincter is going to... External urethral, I'll just abbreviate sphincter is going to relax and the urine comes out, okay? If you really want to hold it, the bladder can hold about a liter of fluid and, um, and then it's about as full as it can get. Um, the bladder can rupture and often this is, happens commonly in females um, during car accidents because the seat belt goes right over top of your bladder. And if the bladder is full and you get into a car accident, that can put a lot of pressure on the bladder, especially if it's full, causing it to rupture, which is then like a huge problem because now you have urine which is inside the body cavity and it can cause um, some, some major problems, okay? So that's a pretty good overview of the bladder. Oh, one more thing is that our ability to control the external urethral sphincter right here doesn't occur until we're like two or three years old, okay? Like literally those brain circuits haven't developed yet that allows us to control when this guy relaxes. That's why babies and even toddlers will go to the bathroom in their pants or in their diapers. They literally haven't developed the neural circuitry to be able to control when this guy contracts and relaxes. It happens automatically. As soon as the, the bladder fills up in a, in, a, in a baby, right? It sends a signal to the spinal cord, which then sends a signal, a motor signal back to the detrusor, causing him to contract, causing the internal sphincter to relax, the external sphincter to relax, and then urine comes out. That's why it's so hard to potty train like a really young puppy. They just don't have that neural circuitry um, developed yet, okay? So that's a, a pretty nice overview of the overall kind of organization of the kidney and the, um, and the bladder and the ureters. Next time we'll talk about kind of the details of what we'll find inside of a single kidney and kind of how that works, thanks.